Kaka! I'm gonna break it before we even <laughs> So, as you know, my experiences with planes have almost always ended in disaster. So, cue the whole reel of me crashing planes and just having a terrible time about it. None of the trees. Oh, I gotta oh do it. Oh my gosh, are you kidding me? Pull up! <laughs> so, Airviews and Horizon Hobby reached out with kind of a challenge. They said, we want you to learn how to fly planes so that you stop embarrassing our products. <laughs> it's, uh, you know, all in good fun. They said, hey, like, if you guys want, if you want to partner up, if you want to make some videos about planes, chasing planes, flying planes, learning to fly them, we'll sponsor that. But you got to do it right. So they sent me three different planes of varying progression. We've got the Turbo Timber 1.5, which is an extremely like beginner learn how to fly line of sight plane. We have the V900, which if the box is to be believed goes 100 miles an hour. Uh, FAA, just, just don't look at those two numbers. It's just 99. Um, and then uh, down here, we have our most advanced of the set, the uh, Viper 70 millimeter EDF, which is gonna be super fun. So today we're gonna build the turbo timber, get them prepared to fly, and then go out, test them out, fly them, uh, and try to learn. So, because I don't know what I'm doing, I brought my friend Winston, who is uh, a member of staff at Asylum Extreme down in... Southern Indiana. Southern Indiana. And uh, he's gonna explain some things like the smart battery program that Horizon Hobby has, as well as the safe program that will hopefully help prevent me from crashing these planes instantly. A while back, Spectrum had sent me this uh, DX8 to play around with to do reviews, so we'll be using their radio with their planes for maximum... Please don't crash our planes, Paul. Um, so yeah, so let's jump into the turbo timber and get building. One of the things I really like about the newer Spectrum batteries is the smart technology. And the two main benefits you get out of that is the first is kind of acting like a black box where you can plug into one of the programmers, check to see if the battery's ever been overheated, over withdrawn or anything along those lines. Um, the second thing I really like about it that makes me love these batteries is you can have what's called auto storage mode. Basically you set a time period on there so after a certain amount of time it starts to discharge the battery which is good for the health of the batteries because I know many times we've gone to the field and not flown all the batteries and forgot about them. Um, it does require the, the smart checker programmer to access some of that stuff, but it is pretty nice. Uh, these are stock batteries right now. I don't think they've been charged yet, um, but if you do a long press on here, you can go in and actually set up the auto storage. And it's weird, it does it by hours, um, but 240 hours is 10 days. I just set it on that so I have plenty of time and it doesn't start discharging before I need it to. Um, but yeah, those are the main benefits I really like with the smart batteries, um, just making sure they don't kill themselves. One of the cool features on these planes that is going to keep Paul from turning these things in just a pile of foam uh, is something called safe technology. Um, there's basically two, two different modes with that where you have, just it takes out the buffeting of the wind and just kind of helps it be a smooth flight. But the second one that's really helpful is basically like auto level with drones, where it holds a level until you roll or pitch on it and it actually has a limit so it can't roll past a certain point. Um, the other thing that makes it really cool is you have what's called the oh crap or oh shit button. Um, I'll make sure Paul has that set up so whenever if he gets into a hairy situation you can literally press the button the, the plane just levels out and goes on the level flight. So hopefully we won't need a trash bag but either way I think I'm gonna have Paul put a trash bag in the fuselage just in case. So with the turbo timber, uh, kind of ahead of time, before we actually pull it out of the box, I'm gonna kind of think about things that I'm excited about with it. I think it's gonna be really easy to put together. I think they're gonna have laid it out. It's one of my things that I don't like about planes is that I don't want it to be an arts and crafts project. I don't want to have to like, you know, paint it and put stickers on it and like fiddle around with the servos and all that. I think all of that's already set up. And then I think this thing's gonna fly amazing. It's got flaps, it's got, giant control surfaces, giant surface area for flying nice and slow. I've chased Winston's around all the time. You can see some footage of, actually I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna show footage of the orange one because I think it's cooler, um, but it's the same thing, just a little bit bigger. And, uh, and I think it's gonna be the perfect learning platform for me as I'm jumping into learning how to fly planes, both line of sight and FPV. So with that out of the way, let's pull it out of the box. Ooh. Okay. So it looks like it opens on this side. I think I can do this. Oh. 
Is that the hard part? Okay, good. There's a little, little monkey action down below. I used my feet to hold the bottom of the box. <laughs> now, truth be told, I really want to start with the jet, but I think I'm going to kill it. If I start with the jet, that is. Yeah, that's the bottom. You're good. It already wants to be in the air. Oh, nice carbon spar or something. Careful. <laughs> I like <laughs> My cameraman's like, I know, you. I know you. Be gently. Okay. Some uh, rudders. Elevators, close. <laughs> Why don't, uh, these don't have servo horns and, s oh no. Okay, so presumably there's something going on down there. Okay. See again, like I, I'm, when I look at stuff, I'm like worried like, oh, this is gonna be really hard to put together, which I don't want it to be because that intimidates me. Okay, instructions, definitely gonna need those. Other wing. Laugh my dare you. Kaka! <laughs> I'm gonna break it before we even play this <laughs> Oh, so this is one thing that I'm really excited about with this. So my family has a, uh, a cabin up in uh, southern Michigan and we have a lake on, or we have a, yeah, a lake on the property or we have lakefront property. So floats will be perfect for that. So I'm really, really, I'm actually really excited about that. Uh, I think it would be so nice to just like sunset, just cruising around. Plus, I actually have a little rudder on the float yeah. so you can steer in the water. Look at that. Got it. Yeah, just leave it out. Looks like a donut. Oh, I'm zoomed in perfect for that. <laughs> That's how you get views, ladies and gentlemen. Why was I so good at that? Look here. <laughs> Woo! Selling planes. got some meat to it it's that's what that's I think that blows my mind like when I was playing around with like when I popped open the jet I was like oh there's some like it's it's okay. substantial it's not just like foam you know well it is mostly just foam but okay that's uh that's a conundrum there that's fun to figure out I'll have to teach you cool that's so nice okay that actually took a bit to unbox. That could be a whole video on its own. So much for that tip. Um, that little wood piece is for the floats. You don't need it. It goes inside the fuselage to do something with the mounting. I don't know. What's it say? Packaging only, not for flight. Oh, even better. I'm glad they labeled it because they didn't have that before. Hold on to me. <laughs> got it. So it's very important that you... Yep, you got it. Yeah, so this little piece is the trailing end, and then the screws are on the front end. Exactly. Okay, landing gear. So, I've got a Phillips, got a machine screws, flexibility. Yep. Landing gear, landing gear, landing gear. And then this guy. Open up enough. I think I can. There you I think go. I can. So now that bounce in and out. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> We've successfully made an RC car. <laughs> Let's go drive. Actually, that would probably be pretty fun. Because there would be no lift, so a dolly's just stay on the. Like, it would kind of like climb. So we're gonna pick one, yeah. stick this into the elevator, and then stick 
elevator through. Oh, that was so satisfying. You know, little bits and pieces. And it's like, is that gonna work? And then it just goes thunk. That was... Oh, I'll show you what you did. Is it okay? No, you're good. Okay, so there's this little thing. So this is for the push rod. So like normally there's like a painful little set of screws in there. Okay, so we're gonna do the bottom one. There we go. <coughs> it just has a locking mechanism on the control rod. Focus, focus, focus. There we go. Locking mechanism on the control rod so it doesn't come off there. <laughs> How do I tell which one's which? Oh, I guess. Yeah, it looks like it's preventing me from being able to plug it in. And you see the two teeth in the front that you just have? Yeah. This is gonna go thunk and thunk. But we'll probably have to bind it first, right? Golly, that's huge. Yeah. So there's two ways to bind this. It sounds like one with and one without safe select on this receiver. If you leave the bind plug in when you bind the radio, it has safe select off. If you remove the bind plug, then it will keep safe select on. So you'll have your modes, which there's a, that's the whole point of buying the bind and fly version of this plane. So we might as well have the safe mode on. There you go. Yeah, you flaps are backwards, but oh well. Oh, <laughs> that's so cool. All right, here, I'll let you do this. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. All right. I do know some things about control surfaces. So if I roll right, it should lift up on the right rudder or el aileron. aileron. Jeez. And vice versa over here. And then when I push the nose down, I should push the nose down. Oh. You probably need to work in the, the end points on it. Yeah. That is correct as well. And then flaps. Oh, that's so cool looking! It's like, I mean, I sit, I fly in planes all the time and I can watch the flaps like deploy. Oh, that's so cool. Got some blinky lights all over it. Oh, that is sweet! And check the motor direction as well. I don't know where the prop is, but... You know what? There was nothing on that that was painful for me. Like, the, it was a little bit finicky to get the thing on, and we had a little trouble binding. But, like, you know, that's all stuff that comes with experience. You know, the more you play with it, the more chances you have to do it. We still need to get the prop on. Um, and I can already see, like, good places to, like, put the FPV and stuff, which, which we'll, we won't do that today, because I promised that we would learn to fly line of sight planes. Um, but yeah, so we'll um, get the motor on here, or the prop on here, and uh, get out for a maiden maybe, a couple of us. Do some, you can do some chase with drones and chase with another plane, and I'll just try to fly it around nice and easy line of sight. Okay, so we're going to quick roll over to a field where we can test this thing out. I think we got all the switches set up, except for maybe the auto level doesn't totally work. Well, it works, but we can't turn it off, I guess, would be the, the clear way to say that. So we're going to get over there and at least get it made into level mode because Winston's got to leave shortly. So I think we're on the right track. It's mine or yours. Dude, this thing is instant warm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh. yeah. Check your control surfaces and you know where the trims are. <laughs> yeah. You know how to get to them. I sh should be able to just take off in the grass, yeah? I think I got auto level on. Oh, that thing? Yes. Okay. A little tail dragger. Okay. Left, right. Pitch down, pitch back, rudder. Alright, here we go. Oh, my 
drone quick. You don't have the boring job now? Dude, I'd love to. I miss it. Yeah. Oh, ho, ho, ho. Don't fall off. Yeah. I got 20 feet to uh, get cold. I can barely use any throttle yet. Yeah. <laughs> no, you'll be able to get close to 10 minutes out of this. This is zero throttle. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not doing anything. No, but the plane twist in the wake of uh, the drone. <laughs> it just launches, dude. Sorry, I didn't tell you. Zero throttle coming back towards us. <laughs> oh, that looks sweet. Whoa, under power, it's awesome, dude. Oh, no, hold power. Give it some boost, though. Have fun with this thing. Yeah, no, it's a... Dude, that's an acrobatic <laughs> plane. It's fun. <laughs> Landing. So that was awesome. Like it was, I mean, there were points where I was just totally hands off. Oh my gosh, it's wet. Um, but it was, it was fun. I was having a blast. Like I already started pushing it, which is not good. Yeah, I just sit there and like literally cover the bottle. Woo. Hey, it's amazing. Subtle games that you are playing And you don't even know I exist you have got me on your dead list And you're conspiring Girl, you are sexual and bad And now you got this on your conscience Because now I'm unresponsive
life shouts through my chest as you watch me bleed. Every kick, drum, hit is a symphony. Every brush of your curves is the air I breathe. You speak, I am listening. Sweat rolls, girl, you're glistening. Slow mo, pull me into the light, the light. There are people watching us, wishing they were obvious. Instead of giving in to the fright, the fright. We can feel the flow underneath our feet. I am listening. 